I think he hadn't done his homework and he'd been talking for more than a year about doing things that he obviously hadn't really studied or understood. Uh, and that does raise a lot of questions. Clinton campaign appears to think they have found one of their strongest attacks yet on Bernie Sanders. After making his plan to break up the banks a signature issue, he actually doesn't know what he's talking about. That's how the Clinton campaign is portraying his interview with the New York Daily News editorial board earlier this year. Sanders campaign, however, has responded with force, saying today, quote, on breaking up big banks, Senator Sanders understands exactly how to do that. We don't need any lessons on getting things done in Congress from someone who didn't pass a single amendment by a roll call vote during her entire career in the Senate. Joining me now, Barney Frank, former congressman, a Hillary Clinton supporter and co-author of the Dodd-Frank legislation that now bears his name, at least in the way we refer to it, and Robert Reich, former Secretary of Labor under President Clinton supporter Bernie Sanders, author of Saving Capitalism for the Many, Not the Few. Uh, and Mr. Frank, let me begin with you. Um, there were a few, few different answers given uh, in, in that interview in the Daily News. There's a great degree of actual policy confusion about this. Um, your response first to what you heard from Senator Sanders about too big to fail, about breaking up the banks in that interview. It was very disappointing because it wasn't coherent. He, he conflated several issues. By the way, uh, I had understood previously that one of his biggest issues to deal with this was uh, Glass-Steagall. I didn't see any reference to Glass-Steagall or explanation of that. He appeared to have forgotten all about this. And of course, Glass Steagall is not relevant to the too big to fail issue, it has to do with, with, with other issues. But um, he, he confused several things. First, he was talking about antitrust, or not first, but then he was talking about not enough loans going to smaller banks. Look, the, the too big to fail issue was very specific. The problem is if an institution is capable of amassing so much debt that if it becomes insolvent and can't pay its debts, it causes systemic damage. Yes. That's what happened in 2008. The legislation deals with that in two ways, the bill that's on the, on the books. First of all, it severely restricts their ability to incur debt. AIG owed $180 billion in credit to fault swaps it couldn't pay. You couldn't do that anymore. You have got to have capital both in general in the institution and specifically. In addition, what we say is this. If an institution is going to go out of business because it can't pay its debts, the federal government takes it over. It fails. That's the key thing right. people don't understand. An institution becomes too heavily indebted, is put out of business by the federal government. And if it has too much debt, and that level of debt threatens the stability of the economy, the federal government temporarily pays some of those debts, only as much as it needs to stop things from going out of control, and then takes it back automatically under an assessment on other large institutions. Nothing in what Senator Sanders said deals with that at all. He... he as I said, confuses several different issues. Right. He seems to have forgotten that he was for Glass-Steagall, and he does not explain in any way how he's going to do it. He does say, and I've dealt with this before in some things, he says he wants to break up the banks, but he doesn't tell us how big is too big. There's a fundamental problem there. The argument is that you don't want a bank to get so indebted and, and, and right. have such debt that it threatens the economy. So, so, so you deal with that by breaking up the banks. But I still haven't heard, and I've asked several times for Senator Sanders, how big is too big? To what level, if he is going to reduce the size of the banks, and he hasn't told us how, to what level do we have to go to protect ourselves. Okay, let me let me let me turn to you, Robert. Um, th there's obviously a lot there. There's 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 a whole uh, sort of array of issues here, right? There's whether the the understanding of Dodd Frank is accurate, whether the actual goal itself is is warranted or necessary, and then this sort of meta question, I think, which is, uh, do you feel the senator is is adequately briefed, is adequately studied, read in on what is essentially one of the central policy issues of his campaign? Well, first of all, Chris, this is a tempest in a teapot. I, I read uh, the interview and I read the transcript. Uh, and what the senator said in response to a question about the Fed's authority, and uh, not the authority of the president, the Fed's authority uh, to break up the big banks, is that he did not know. And I can understand that because uh, the Fed's authority is a little bit ambiguous yes. under various statutes. And then when it came to the president's authority, uh, Senator Sanders was very specific, and he was accurate. He said, well, the president can, through the Treasury secretary, uh, convene a, a group of regulators. Uh, it is called the Financial Stability Oversight Board, uh, and uh, they can determine whether a bank is too risky. Uh, and he, in terms of, in, in terms of Glass-Steagall, I mean, Senator Sanders has said throughout this campaign uh, that Glass-Steagall needs to be resurrected. Uh, he cannot 
uh, abide the fact uh, that Senator Clinton does not want to resurrect Glass-Steagall, uh, because uh, although Glass-Steagall would not have prevented the financial meltdown, it would have, at least in the eyes of many regulators, many observers, including Dan Tarullo at the Fed, it would have helped. Right. Uh, and so we need to resurrect Glass-Steagall, and, and the senator has said that re repeatedly. I, I honestly I think that this entire tempest is, is really a reflection of how well the senator is doing, and the mainstream press may be a little bit nervous, uh, and certainly the establishment oh. is a little bit worried. Uh, Mr. Frank, you don't seem to agree with that. No, that, I, I, I'm sorry that Mr. Weiss is kind of all the, the picking on poor Bernie, who has, of course, been uh, hypercritical uh, of others. And by the way, the thing that most bothered me in that, in that interview and, and elsewhere in the campaign is of a kind of a McCarthyite suggestion that uh, the reason big banks and other institutions haven't been criminally prosecuted uh, is in part because people have taken financial contributions. Uh, and that, by the way, is an attack on President Obama. Let's be very clear. The Secretary of State does not get to indict people. So the complaint that there were not criminal prosecutions has literally zero to do with, with, with Secretary Clinton. It's an attack on President Obama. I wanted there to be more prosecutions. There were some policy street choices I disagreed with. But, but Senator Sanders' consistent uh, uh, suggesting that somehow people were, were persuaded not to do that because of campaign contributions is, is, is a, as I said, it's a kind of McCarthyism. It's an accusation without substance. Beyond that, uh, no, I don't blame the press. I don't see how you can do that. The, that was a very good interview, uh, and they did a very good job. And, no, it, it is not the case that the president can convene a group of regulators. Um, Hillary Clinton, by the way, has been very specific. There are some powers in the existing law to deal with banks if they are a serious threat. She, unlike Senator Sanders, has said specifically she wants to increase the power to deal with banks if there is a complexity that is getting out of control. But uh, well, they're already they're, there's already con too much complexity, and they're already out of control. You know, in 19, in 2008, the biggest five five biggest banks had 33 percent of total banking assets. Today, the five biggest banks have 44 percent of total yes, biggest of assets. And if they were too big to fail, then they're too big to no, fail. They're Robert, too big to jail. They're the, too big to curtail. Uh, they have too much political power as well as economic issue. power. Well, no, now, you wait misunderstand. A political you misunderstand power is the part issue. of the issue. It is not the size of the banks. It is the size of the indebtedness. Large institutions right. that are solidly capitalized, that don't right. have a lot of debt, it's the leverage. And that's the key thing. It's the amount of debt right. they leave and behind. Me, and Congressman Frank, with, 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 all, with, all, bill, with, all, with all due respect, no, I'm I do sorry, respect you a great deal. But you don't like the it point. Is, but it is, no, do. it's not, it's not no. just economics here. We're also talking about political power. Okay, but I power. want to talk about economics. I understand that. But you don't like the economics because it goes against your argument. We'll get to the politics later. No, the, 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 the economics is exactly I in my argument. I want to they finish go together. The economics, the economics right. and the politics are intertwined so, here. So, so, oh, so, Mr. Rice, you don't want me to make the point about your economic mistake, and I understand that. It may be embarrassing, but the fact is this. The problem is not their size. It is the amount of indebtedness they leave behind and how you deal with that. And we deal with that by pre preventing them from getting excessively indebted as they were in the past. So it's very different than 2008. You could not have an AIG again. And we also say that if they do get too indebted, they fail. They are put out of business. Now, as to politics, I will say this. With regard to the political power, when we were dealing with the legislation, far more political power, frankly, is in the community banks, the credit unions, because they represent everybody there. I did not find, in when I was trying to get, for instance, the Consumer Bureau adopted, uh, that it was the big banks that I had to worry about. I had to worry about the political power of the community banks located as they are in everybody's district. Let me just say this. Uh, the, the new head, this the president the of the Federal Reserve this. Bank in Minnesota, a Republican, a former Goldman Sachs uh, uh, executive, he says the big banks ought to be broken up. He's a Republican, former Goldman Sachs executive. He's, he's now person. chairman. He's now president of the Federal Reserve Bank in Minneapolis. Before him, the, the Federal Reserve Bank uh, president in Dallas said the big banks have to be broken up. Sandy yes. Weil thinks the big banks ought to be broken up. This is not a fringe idea. Uh, I didn't Dan say Tarullo it was a fringe idea. The big ranks should I said be it, shrunk. And I, what I'm saying is this, and you're evading my point again. If you believe the banks ought to be broken up, by the way, most of the federal officials do not think you have to break up the banks. We think we have to control their indebtedness. And that, again, is a point you seem to miss. But beyond that, if you tell me the banks are too big and have to be broken up, to what level? 
if, if the argument is that we cannot allow an institution to exist if it's, if it's uh, going out of business or its indebtedness will threaten us, I, I ask people to tell me to what level. Is it $500 billion? Is it $300 billion? All those have implications for the economy. Are of we course, they have huge implications. Banks? Are we going to break they are 10 they banks too, into eight pieces already, each? What, what's please, the level to which you want to reduce If they are already too big to fail and curtail and jail. If what they're too the big level? to jail, no, if there's no way of controlling the big banks in this country, Wait, and there is not is right now, the right? they what's should be the broken number? up right now. In my you view, they should be broken up right now. How big is too big? Do, They're do, too big right now. Well, but, and what, and but the question is a they, right? Is the, the question for I think for the, for anyone, right? Uh, whether you're uh, Bernie Sanders or anyone else, right, who's saying too big to fail should be broken up. I mean, there is right now a classification which is the systemically important financial institutions. That's a right. part of Dodd Frank that essentially throws a lasso around the largest entities, the ones that have been deemed systemically uh, uh, vital, the ones that, that 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 threaten the biggest risk. Is that essentially the cutoff? No, well, they don't even, the biggest right. bank, wait a minute, Chris. The biggest banks right now don't even have plans for winding themselves down in the event right. of a financial problem. They they have the the Fed and all of the oversight groups who are supposed to be looking at them have failed them on the basic principle of having a winding right. down plan. Now, if you don't even have a plan that passes this muster, the, uh, you ought to be yes. you ought to be put out of these, your misery. These, let me just stop let me right respond, there. This, let me respond to that, please, Chris. First of all, very the quickly, level, there were two issues here. One is the level at which you get extra supervision. Uh, that's $50 billion. Nobody is suggesting, I think, that no bank be bigger than $50 billion. And again, the point is that what we want to do is to regulate them. As to the point Mr. Rice just made, yeah, we did require in the bill that they submit these plans. And under the law, it's working well. Some of them have been told those plans yeah, aren't good enough. But I want to repeat, it makes no sense. It's irresponsible to say we have to break them up. Okay. They're too big. And not tell Barney them. Frank, this is where you want to Mr. Frank, Mr. Rice, Mr. Frank and Mr. Rice, I'm sorry. That was uh, illuminating, deeply illuminating.